what if we can make these as many as we want making money is hard unless you do something illegal and i definitely don't want you to think something of that sort but we can recreate this effect use it in our projects present it to some clients and then make some money sounds good let's start hello designers welcome back to dexplorian i'm dd and this channel is dedicated to designing in photoshop and sharing the process with you and along with that we explore various tools techniques and tips and tricks which will improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game today we are going to create the money engrave effect it's lots more easier to create than it looks we just have to apply some filters and effects that's it just like other times for your convenience i have listed the steps here along with their timestamps but i want you to spend as much time as possible with me so without any further ado let's get started create the canvas of your choice and bring in the image i'll be using this image and if you want to use the same image you can get the download link in the description i'll resize it a bit and then we have to turn this image into black and white there are multiple ways of doing this in photoshop and you can do it in whatever way you like I prefer doing this by applying a gradient map. For that, we have to select the layer and go here to add an adjustment layer and then click on gradient map. The main reason of using the gradient map is that when we click here to open the gradient editor, we can very easily adjust the amount of blacks and whites in the image by moving these sliders and make the image more dramatic. I've made a complete dedicated video on using the gradient map and if you are interested in knowing the tool in details, then i would suggest you to watch this video and you can find it by clicking on the i button above and the link of the same will be given in the description as well coming back we will clip the adjustment layer to the image layer and how do we do that hold the alt or option key and bring the cursor in between the layers and when the cursor changes just click we'll select both these layers by holding the shift key and then convert them into a smart object let's rename it as subject and now we'll add a new blank layer above the subject layer and we're gonna fill it with 50% gray. How? We go to edit and then click on fill and in this content drop down we will find the 50% gray option and without changing anything else click ok and our layer is filled. Then we'll convert the gray layer into a smart object so that we can apply some smart filters to it. Then we go to filter and click on filter gallery. A new window will open. There's a whole lot of filters here. For now, we will go to sketch folder and click on halftone pattern. There are two sliders here and they are pretty self-explanatory. We will adjust them as per our choice and make sure you choose dot in the pattern type here. We get two more options here which you can play with. I will keep it like this for now. And then we click here on this plus icon to add another filter and this time it will be torn edges. Here we get three sliders and we'll play with them a little and when you are done hit ok. This is what it looks like and now we'll be adding one more filter and for that we go to filter again then distort and click on twirl. I'll adjust the angle slider to near about 100 and click ok and then we'll change the blend mode of the gray layer to hard mix. And now the effect is starting to show up. But we are not there yet we have to make few more adjustments to get it right. And if you have made this far and finding the video helpful then I would request you to hit the like button and if you are interested in similar contents then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. We'll start with the subject layer, select it and go to image menu then adjustments and click on shadows and highlights. Basically there are two sliders here, one for the shadows and another for highlights. Adjust them as you want. I will keep it like that and press ok. I will do some more adjustments and here comes the advantage of smart filters. We can double click on any of the filters here and edit it again. And we can do this as many times we want. I'm satisfied and I'll stop here and now we have to colorize it like we have on our currency notes. And for that I'll add a gradient adjustment layer on top of the gray layer and click here to open the gradient editor and then click on this handle on the left and again click here to change its color. I'll be using a shade of red. Then we have to first click on this handle above the slider to change the opacity and then do the same as we did in case of the right handle. The color will be different this time. And now we have to change the blend mode of this gradient adjustment layer to screen. I will adjust the gradient a little more. You can also change the angle of the gradient if you want. You can also experiment with the styles here. I will stick with linear. I will do few more adjustments. 
Let's rename the layer as money texture and now select all the three layers by holding the shift key and press ctrl or command G to group them together and rename the group as subject composite. We have to create a background and for that we will add a solid color adjustment layer, make it white and place it at the bottom. I'm not really satisfied with the color so I'll add a levels adjustment layer and clip it to the subject composite and now grab this handle on the left and slide it towards right. This basically controls the shadows in the image. Then we hold the right handle and bring it towards the left. This controls the highlights. I would rather place it back where it was and grab the middle one which controls the mid-tones and adjust it a little. Yes, now it's better. What do you say? In the next step, we're gonna create a smoke effect by layer masking using a specialized brush. We'll add a layer mask to the subject composite group and then activate the brush tool by clicking here. Right click anywhere to open the brush settings and we're gonna select a custom brush made just for this purpose and it's called the smoke photoshop brushes. It's a set of 15 high resolution brushes and I'll give this completely free to those who are going to subscribe to the channel and chant Explorian before going to bed for one month. Just kidding. It's from brusheasy.com and it's completely free and I've already given the download link in the description. You can click them one by one to see the patterns. I'll be selecting this one and hit enter. Okay, one thing I forgot, before working with the brush, we have to fill the layer masks with black so that the whole image is masked and nothing can be seen and to do that, we have to select the layer mask and since black is our foreground color, we'll press Alt or Option plus Backspace and our layer mask is all black and everything is hidden. Then we press the X key to change the foreground color to white and start using the brush to reveal the image underneath the mask. See how beautiful the effect is? I'm going to continue toggling between the foreground and background color by pressing the X key and hiding and revealing the image. You can rotate the brush with the help of the right and left arrow keys. And you can also adjust the brush size by pressing the left and right square bracket keys. Continue doing the same till you are satisfied with your artwork. I'll resize it so that it fills up the whole canvas. And if required, you can change the brush. I'll be stopping here, but you can definitely continue doing it as long as you want. Lastly, we're gonna add some text and for that we will click on the text tool and then click anywhere on the canvas and type in our text. I'll be using a font called Montserrat and change the style to bold italics. Precise it by holding the Alter Option key so that the dimensions remain intact. Decrease the spacing between the characters. And now we're gonna make some changes in the font to give it a totally new makeover. For that we will convert the text into a shape and you will notice some anchor points appearing and we're gonna use them to make the changes. We'll activate the direct selection tool and make a selection like this to select some of the anchor points and then hold the shift key and click on any of the selected anchors and drag them like this. Now I will extend this part in the same process. To move a character we have to make the selection of the whole character and holding the shift key click on any of the anchors and drag it to place it. I think you got what I am trying to show you and now I will be speeding up the process to save the time. I am done and now we will go back to the move tool and position it wherever we want it. I want the subject in the image to look like HF of the text. And how can we do that? That's right, by layer masking. We will add a layer mask to the text turned shape layer. Take the brush tool again and this time select the hard round brush, adjust the size and set black as foreground color and paint over the areas to mask it out. I'll add few more text here at the bottom. I want to add a line beneath the text so I'll activate the line tool by clicking here and then draw the line. Change its fill color to red. I'll add another line of text here and I'm going to use a trick here. I'll hold the alter option key and hover the cursor over the text and when it changes like this. 
Just click and drag and place it wherever you want. And now you can double click on the text and edit it as you want. It's almost done, just a few more adjustments. And our poster is complete. I just realized that it has become quite a long video and I am extremely thankful to you for sticking around till the end. The effect looks really cool and you can spice it up with different color gradient. But for that you have to master the technique of gradient mapping and this video can help you out. <laughs>